Hi, welcome to this tutorial. This tutorial is just going to have a look at flame tests. Now in schools and colleges this is done quite a lot and to be honest it's a lot of fun. Uh, I particularly enjoy uh, looking at flame tests. We won't go into the emission spectra uh, which is the origin really of where the flames come from um, but we'll just have a look at the various colours you can get from the different elements. I'm going to choose 25 uh, different elements uh, to look at and I'll, I'll go through them alphabetically just to make things easier. So let's have a look at the first one. So the first one is arsenic. So an arsenic uh, burns with a bright uh, blue flame, as you can see here. Uh, the next one would be uh, boron. So uh, boron compounds have a nice bright green flame, as you can see. Uh, barium, um, if we look at uh, barium here, barium's barium's got a green flame too, but it's it's a bit little bit paler than than boron. So if you if you're ever um, not too sure, then you probably have to get a little bit of boron and just to see, just to compare if you're not too sure which one's which. Um, look at this next one, um, calcium. And calcium's got a fantastic colour, it's a nice brick red colour. Um, uh, cesium next. So cesium's got a nice um, bluey violet uh, flame to it. And remember, when you do these um, flame tests, you must always make sure you your, your um, Bunsen burner flame is um, uh, colourless if you will, so get, it, get it on the highest setting so you, can, you can't see any of the, uh, the, the colour from the flame. So okay. next is copper, so uh, copper's one of my favourites, it's a lovely blue flame, uh, copper 1 gives a nice blue flame like this here. Uh, copper 2 species on the other hand, a more bluey green, and that depends really what's, what's around the copper. Um, iron, iron's another favourite of mine, so iron's got this, this uh, yellowy gold colour flame. Um, and we look uh, next, uh, we'll look at indium, indium's got a, uh, like a blue flame to it. Uh, potassium, it's more violet in colour. Uh, lithium, a lovely red colour, a lovely red colour coming from uh, lithium here. Then if we go on to uh, magnesium, uh, magnesium uh, has got this bright white flame and everybody's aware of uh, magnesium because uh, of sparklers and things like that. But I've missed one actually, actually uh, manganese, if we look at manganese, manganese has got this yellowish or greeny yellow colour to it. Um, moving on uh, just a little, a little bit more to molybdenum. Molybdenum is very, very, very similar to uh, manganese, it's got this like yellowish green colour to it. Um, phosphorus uh, is, is, is getting towards a, a turquoise blue green uh, colour to it. Uh, lead, lead's got a, like a blue but more a really like whitey blue colour, a bit like what you'd see in um, uh, yeah, like electric arcs or something like that. And then we look at uh, rubidium, rubidium's got this, uh, this red violety colour uh, to it. Um, Antimony, um, antimony's got like a pale, pale green colour, not too dissimilar to uh, what we saw for um, barium and things like that. So again, you'd have to, if you're not too sure which element it is when it's when you're comparing greens with greens, it's also always best to have a little sample of uh, known compounds so you can just compare, especially looking at an unknown compound. Um, so we've we've done the antimony now. Uh, selenium's got this uh, quite blue colour to it. Um, strontium, again, is red. And I'll, I'll put a list of all these um, elements up so you can have a look at how I'm going through my alphabetically. Um, and then we've got tellurium here. Uh, tellurium's um, more of a pale green again. So a lot of greens uh, here. Another green one would be thallium. So thallium's green. And then I'll end it with zinc. Zinc's Things got like a bluish green colour, which is which is not too dissimilar to uh, what we saw for phosphorus. So you'd have to you have to get a sample of phosphorus and, and zinc to to actually distinguish between the two there. So hopefully that's that's just a basic introduction to the flame test. There's nothing quite like doing it uh, in the laboratory. I, I've done it here by holding the uh, flames in my hand, if you will, but. If you if you've ever tried in the laboratory, there's nothing quite like seeing the intensity of the colours, and those colours actually come from the emission spectra for each individual element. The flame tests that you'll do in schools and colleges 
are more um, qualitative. They'll, they'll tell you really what is present, but they won't tell you how much of that particular element is present. But there are techniques out there um, which can look at that, and we'll cover them when we go on to uh, analytical uh, tutorials or the different analytical techniques we can use. So particularly um, analytical uh, techniques for looking at inorganic chem compounds are very useful for um, the pharmaceutical industry, for example, for looking at trace elements that are left in products to make sure they're, they're not released in, in the drugs that we take, in everyday medicines. So, hope you enjoyed that um, quick introduction to flame tests and do check out the other uh, tutorials that are going to follow from this one on emission spectra for those um, elements I've just mentioned. See you soon. Bye-bye.